And so now we're going to move over a little bit into uh, the more uh, commercial, commercialized cordage. So I've got regular old, uh, how do we say this, laundry line. Uh, I think this is like a quarter of an inch diameter. I believe this is this. Again, you can get this from any supermarket. Uh, and I think it comes in 20 or 50 feet lengths. And this is an alpine coil like this. And um, alpine coil is relatively easy to do to bind up uh, your cordage when you're not using it. Um, and really what you do, uh, and again I have a video on this, but real quick, like very similar to common whipping as I showed earlier, you just make a bite or a loop like this. And um, then you just gather up the remaining lengths of the cordage like so. Now I'll just do this real quick and dirty because I don't want to take a little time going through that. Uh, again, look, just do a search on my channel to find the video on how to do with al alpine coil. And I kind of go through it a little bit more slowly. Until you have a little bit of length left. And then this length here, I take and I just wrap around everything towards the loop that we gathered the coil to. And so this last little piece here, I find my loop I put it through the loop like so and then I find the end and I pull that and it keeps everything together nice and tight and I can hang this up somewhere or put it someplace and it's, I don't have my cordage all in a knot somewhere. Learning your knots, that's a whole other thing. Learning your knots. Um, I've got about 50 knots um, that are categorized into coils, um, loops, uh, decorative knots and so forth that so forth that I try to commit to memory um, and there are people who again study knots and they know their knots people that are doing into sailing and, 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 and mountain climbing you definitely need they, they definitely need to know your knot know their knots they definitely do tend to know their knots um, for myself I tend to try to commit at least you know right off the top of my head at least 10 to 25 different knots um, and I try to keep them simple and I've, I've categorized some of them. I haven't yet to do a video doing all 50, uh, which I hope to do uh, soon. Uh, but knowing your knots saves you, I mean, all kinds of grief, all kinds of trouble. You don't have to, if you know how to bind up a, a rope properly or shorten the length of it, you don't have to cut. Um, making nets. Uh, if anything, what I've learned about not, you know, playing around with knots is that I'm not frustrated by a bundle of cordage anymore. I actually have the patience and the skill now to kind of undo uh, a mess of, of cordage. And it's actually kind of interesting and fun. Um, but again, you, you have to kind of play with the rope and get to know, commit some knots to memory. And then you understand exactly how cordage starts to work and wrap around itself and things like that. But for now, this is the Alpine coil. And, um, Again, again, we're just talking about some of the more modern and store more modern store bought pieces of cordage. Um, here's a length that's cotton based. Um, we were just talking about knots a little bit. Here's some store bought cordage that I kind of did this. Uh, I think it's a Chinese good luck knot. I was just playing around with. Um, and again, this is a decorative type of a knot. Uh, and then up close, it looks like this. You know, front and back. You know, and again for gift making gift wrapping you know having you know necklaces and things like that you know knowing your knots is kind of it's kind of a cool skill to have you can do a lot you can find out you'd be very empowered uh by being able to do things with 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 a piece of length of string or twine uh that you wouldn't think you'd be able to do um let's see uh what else we got here uh here's a piece of um this is kind of my practice piece of cordage and this is synthetic you can see the sheen on it and I like this because uh, this is very hard this type of cordage is because it's slippery and it's in it's synthetic is it doesn't hold a knot tightly so uh, I can undo this and 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 redo it very easily um, so this is actually my practice links when I'm when I when I need to review knots or when I'm learning a new knot I can use this type but again this piece of synthetic cordage uh, and and here's a piece of bank line um, that actually comes from Dave Canterbury's um, uh, website he's got an online store and uh, this stuff is actually pretty good it's pretty strong it was gifted to me 
and uh, this is this is good stuff. This is useful stuff. So I just kind of keep you know keep the spool that it was given to me uh, around for if I need it uh, for something. Uh, and uh, this is good stuff. Uh, it's kind of thin, but but it, but it but it works good for make some nets or whatever. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. And then what I have here are some pieces of um, you know here's another piece here that's got the alpine coil. Uh, what I have here are some pieces of 550 cord. And for practical or modern or urban survival, um, you know, resilient living, this is the stuff you want to have, all right? 550 cord. This, I think, is a grade A1, um, meaning that this particular grade of paracord, and there's four grades. Um, there's, a, there's a 1A and there's a 2. Three, two A, uh, two and a two A, and then a one and a one A, and then it goes down to three and four. Three actually, the breaking point is at five hundred and fifty pounds. That's why it's called five fifty paracord, and paracord is, is basically the lines that you know parachutists use for the parachutes. That's why it's called paracord. But five fifty is the stuff you want to you want to get, you want to you want to keep. Um, this grade here is good for 110 pounds. I reckon that's the breaking strength is. And so, um, the chart that I was looking at, you know, this, this would be, a a, a, a one, a, a ranking of paracord, uh, that breaks at about hundred pounds. Um, but still, this is still good stuff. And the reason why I say that is because, um, because this stuff, um, let's see, I didn't mess this are because this stuff um, has these has the inner uh, fibers has seven inner fibers and you cut it and what you end up having to do is you end up having to burn this so this doesn't fray so I don't have my lighter with but you can take a lighter and just kind of burn this and it'll glue itself back together so I recommend you doing that or we'll put a knot in it an overhand knot it'll be fine um, but the, the importance of this paracord is that uh, oftentimes in the five C's of survival you want to have things that that in your kit that give you multiple uses all right that's kind of the key right at least as many uses as possible you know uh, two to three uses outside of its original uses as best right so this here has the paracord good grade paracord has seven smaller fibers in it that is wrapped around this this dark cord you know that has already been wine this in of itself is strong but then coupled with these seven nylon fibers, one, two, three, four, let's see, uh, five, uh, six, and seven. Um, yeah, the, 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 these can be made for nets, uh, as we already talked about. This can be good lines for fishing, uh, sutures, because these are twisted. You can even break these down into smaller fibers, right? And you might not be able to see this on camera, but I'll do my oops. I'll do my best here, you know. But these are even smaller fibers, right? For suturing or making stitches if you need to, or sewing, uh, mending clothing. Uh, I mean, cord is just has endless, 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 endless uses, right? And I haven't even talked about really the self-defense applications of it. Um, hopefully, I'll get there. But uh, uh, cord is you just you just can't do too much with it. But as a suggestion for your own kit, you know, from a practical survival standpoint or resilient living standpoint, get you a spool of 550 paracord, learn you at least 10 knots that you can know off the top of your head. Uh, and, um, you know, at least, you know, if not, a, this is 50 feet, you know, I guess you can never have cordage too long, but, but for a smaller kit, I at least keep 20. And what you can do is you, you may not be able to see this off on camera, but what my my I can take a piece of cordage and I can stretch it out to my arm arm width, right, arm length, and that's about for 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 people whose uh, measurements are their bodies are average, if you will, uh, meaning their legs, their torsos and legs and things are in proportion. Um, your arm span is really approximately your height, um, if, if you didn't know that. So, you know, meaning if you're six foot and you pull, put your arms out and you measure from fingertip to fingertip, um, that should be about six feet. And so what you, if you know that, then what you can do is you can measure by measuring out the lengths of your arms. So you know how much you have, at least in the field, right? 
So um, I can measure out, and I usually measure out like maybe 20 feet, uh, 20, 30 feet, and that I, that I coil up and I keep in my kit a 550 cord. Because um, this stuff, you can make bows out of it. I mean, some of the things that you can do with some cordage, right? And then the fact that you can even break it down into smaller bits, like for traps and stuff, uh, is even better. All right, so 550 cord definitely recommended. Um, let's see. Another thing I'm talk about or bring up is, and this is really cheap. Got this at Walmart for four bucks, by the way. Um, so let's see what else we got here. Uh, let's talk about uh, duct tape. <laughs> All-purpose duct tape. Uh, let's see. As, as far as the five C's are concerned. I think this has a use for everything except for maybe cutting and even then I think you could after you make a piece of cordage out of this you can kind of use this to kind of cut something very small small by making a uh, uh, making a, a, a cordage kind of chain or rope that you would just use friction to break through something um, but you can do pretty much everything with duct tape including baking cordage so if I take a piece of this and just break a piece off and then strip it, right? I get this in of itself as a piece of lashing. I can fold it together. Actually, I can probably even split it down one more time. Yep, just like that. And then um, I can pinch this together because it'll stick on itself. And I'm going to do it with another piece. And we all know the strength and the versatility and the durability of duct tape. And... Um, and then now what we have is two lengths of lashings or cordage rope and I just put a small overhand knot into both of these right quick and um, I'm gonna just take this and I'm going to, to start a reverse twist now again I got a video on this but you've heard me talk about it reverse twist is I want to put this one on top of the other I want to twist the top one away from me and grab the bottom one and pull twist both of them towards me now the one that I was just twisting is on the bottom this new one is on the top I want to twist that away from me or towards the camera and then grab both of them and twist towards me and then repeat this uh, as I go down the line right and this if I do this fast enough then I can start to get a length of uh, twisted reverse twisted cordage all right out of duct tape right and so this is pretty strong right so uh, again you keep you a roll of duct tape or you take a piece of a lighter and you put uh, a, a, a length of duct tape around your your lighter uh, and and then you have um, a way to make cordage with you right and duct tape is good stuff and depending on the size of the strip that you make and how tightly you twist it it could be fairly serviceable all right this ain't going nowhere right so uh it's hopefully this is gives, gives you just some ideas um of what to do with a piece of duct tape and um why cordage in your kit is very important and how we as human beings um have survived um because we can manipulate the fibers and make something else out of the fibers so um a couple of things in closing i'm gonna i want to uh, share is um, again just another useful way to use cordage. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pack some things in here. I've got my little carving in just to give this container some weight. And I'm gonna show you um, a bale sling. And I've got the shorter pieces that I was working with. And we'll go ahead and we'll use that. Um, I'll pull that out because this I think this will be a good opportunity because the length on these are perfect for this. Um, but I'm gonna show you a bell sling that really works. I had to carry a battery one time and uh, it didn't have a handle on it. And we're talking about a car battery, excuse me. And you know, they can be kind of heavy and cumbersome. And so I uh, was able to take a piece of rope and had to walk a couple of blocks with this dead battery in the middle of winter. And what I did was because I knew my knots was I made a, a, a pail or a bale sling, right? And so I have a container like this, and the battery is pretty much shaped like this. And under the bottom, I loop like so. I want to make an overhand knot 
and cinch down. Now, I wanna go ahead and take the inside of the, the, the overhand knot that I made and split them apart. And then I want to wrap these over the top, but the trick is to keep hold of your ends, right? That's the, that's the trick. And that's kind of wanted to let go of, but I got a hold to it. And let this wrap on the other side and then keep it tight. And so what you end up having is you have a, a way to carry uh, your pail or a battery or your um, a bucket for a well or something that you can dip down and fill with water and pull up, all right? So that's just kind of a quick and dirty way to make a carry item, again, multiple uses, out of a piece of cordage, right? And so this would work just fine. And, I, and again, in the real world, I, I need, I just because I knew my knots, I was able to comfortably carry this battery a few blocks uh, that was kind of heavy uh, in the middle of winter um, by making uh, a, a handle out of uh, a piece of rope, right? So then next, the other thing, uh, last thing I wanna mention or talk about is, and I mentioned this as far as self-defense wise. Now, again, I come from a, a martial arts background. I come from a Filipino martial arts background specifically. Uh, and uh, the, the Filipino martial arts and the Indonesian martial arts are kind of very similar because it, just because of regional proximity to, to one another in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, and uh, there's, uh, there's also a uh, Japanese martial art that's called Hojo Jutsu, and that's the art of uh, binding and tying, uh, specifically prisoners, apprehension of them, of them and holding them tight. Uh, I think uh, I think the term is sh uh, shibari, which is uh, the more erotic form of tying uh, and binding someone uh, for erotic purposes. Uh, kind of holding someone tight is is a good skill to know if if you ever are in an unfortunate situation where you need to subdue and restrain someone. Um, but also as a, as a fighting tool, uh, I also I think uh, in uh, hapkido, which is a Korean martial art. Uh, the ancient uh, royal guards were not allowed to have weapons, like bladed weapons, so they used their sashes or their belts to restrain and subdue people. And again, you could get this wet, I could put a rock in this, and, and it could be a flailing or a hitting weapon. Uh, again, it can be a whipping weapon, it can be a whip. Uh, there's there's the, the rope dart or the chain whip of the Chinese martial arts on basically ba making a retractable throwing weapon that you can throw back with by t anchoring a uh, uh, a uh, weighted end onto it. Um, there's ways to fight and bind uh, using your rope sash. Uh, if you're female and you carry a purse, a purse strap, your belt, a uh, t-shirt would work. Uh, you know, strips of duct tape would work. Um, and that would be the sarong method. Uh, and actually, Ron Balicki, you'd want to look that name up. Uh, Ron Balicki, he has the fighting sarong. I believe he settles that on coldsteel.com. It's a very good uh, video series on how to use um, clothing or cordage as a self defense uh, tool, right? And so basically, if you are always have your clothes on, you will never be unarmed. Um, if you practice and know uh, how to utilize your clothing or cordage as a means of self-defense um, but again it, it, it again as far as improvised weaponry is concerned when we talk about self-reliance resilient living you know those sorts of things you you have to train them it's not enough just to know them you have to train it you have to get a training partner and you have to find a competent instructor or at least be disciplined enough uh, and careful enough to um, learn and work on these things. The problem with self-defense situations is that you're dealing with stress, you're dealing with uh, the unknown variables, and um, if you are not in the right mindset and if you don't train properly with the proper mindset, it doesn't matter how much techniques you know if you can't pull off the one technique that can save your life. So again, it's kind of cool to know that such things exist and that's great, yeah, I can take off my clothes or take off my belt and I can throw people around with it and you know choke them out and da 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 but um if you don't don't ingrain it in your muscle memory uh and treat it as it is you know as a as, as a weapon at that point 
um, to defend yourself, then um, it, I, I can guarantee it won't work for you, right? Um, I used a bar towel when I worked a lot uh, as a door guy um, because I always had a bar towel as a bouncer, as a door guy to wipe off tables and stuff like that. Um, but because I practice with 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 uh, flexible weapons, uh, towels and things like that, um, which again could be knitted material like this, again coming from cordage, which is all ties back in. I could, you know, I, I've I've on occasion, you know, had to use bar towels to uh, deal with situations uh, and so I, I know that they work and it can be useful so again I just wanted to throw that out there real quick and dirty of one of you know, the five C's uh, one of the five C's of survival which is cordage and just it, it's a whole new whole nother thing get your cordage down understand how to make it or at least how to manipulate it uh, to make knots how to weave knit now bind and you'll be golden for uh, doing all kinds of uh, cool stuff that can um, help save yourself in a situation or um, help save others. So uh, again, I'm gonna got a little bit long-winded on this one, but again, I, I cordage is kind of a kind of a small passion of mine. I enjoy it because I understand the, the versatility of it all, uh, and I hope this kind of sparks some ideas and uh, and and um, was able to inspire you as far as giving you giving you um, another way to look at. Uh, one of the most important items you should have in your kit. All right. Um, as a PS, I almost forgot. Um, here's a piece of some makeshift snowshoes I tried to create out of some uh, some willow uh, for my daughter when she was smaller. Uh, and again, I'm using the kind of store bought jute uh, cordage twine. Uh, to do this this weaving pattern uh, for snowshoes, the webbing, if you will, and again, another great use of cordage if you know how to do the webbing. And um, it was a good experimentation for me uh, to play with that and to try and learn how to do this. Um, again, I, I have an idea how it's done. I'm going to have to review it again and uh, try try my hand again at making another pair of these but more bigger obviously uh, but I just kind of keep these around just because it was kind of a cool fun project that she actually could use um, and there's a way that they lace around the feet with um, the cordage here because um, the toes the toes go here um, and uh, you know this this is a piece of cordage that's, lo that's looped around here that's tied around the crossbar um, and then this webbing is tied to this cordage here and then the crossbar here has this integral webbing that is done at the, at the toes. So this was kind of a fun, interesting little project that I, that I that actually ended up working out pretty well. Um, they're not very pretty looking per se, but um, uh, again, if you, if, you, if you know cordage and you know how to manipulate your cordage, then um, you, know, you can make a pair of snowshoes in a pinch if you need to. So just wanted to close it out with that.